which we, we got the long version of the bio, please welcome the Honorable Laurent Lamotte. Thank you very much. I'd like to start by asking a minute of silence for the memory of the victims of last night's Paris attack. Thank you. As you might have heard, ISIS has claimed responsibility for this barbaric attack. And the time has certainly come for the world to stand together as one, to take the fight to them, once and for all. I'd like to congratulate all the former prime ministers, Prime Minister Jean-Max Belrive, Prime Minister Gary Coney, that I haven't seen in a few months, uh, the current Prime Minister of Haiti, Kaplum, Congresswoman Frederica Wilson, Ambassador Ken Merton, members of the civil society, diaspora organizations, the press, I see Jacqueline Charles is here, Island TV. I'd like to congratulate the, certainly the members of the NAHP, Newton Sano and Serge Renault for this wonderful event that you're putting together. I'd like to congratulate also um, the ambassador of Canada that's here, ambassador of Haiti to the OAS, and all the VIPs and officials. And I hope I, I didn't forget anybody, but if I did, I still love you. <laughs> I'm deeply honored to take the stage today to speak about the importance of the diaspora in the development of Haiti. And this event symbolizes what Haiti can be. And that's why I want to take time out again to congratulate the NAHP. Because you've done something that not many people can claim to have done. You put not one, not two, not three, but four prime ministers together in one event. And don't let anybody tell you that it's not a major achievement because it's never been done before. And I'm very impressed by the professionalism of this event. Bon bagay. Keep up the good work. Our beloved Haiti is unique in many aspects, in our culture, our history, and the size and dynamism of all of you here today. Haiti is in our hearts. Haiti, c'est sans cap couler dans vingt nous. Haiti dans cœur nous. Haiti, c'est pas nous. Les gens nous chèment, chèmentres et faut que nous voyons pays de monter. Pas quitter et à parler pays de mal, malgré difficulté. Parce que la caille, c'est la caille. La caille, la caille, pas rien dans la caille. Nous, là, je ne veux dire, pour une bonne raison. Nous, là, pour nous travail ensemble pour que nous jouions une solution qui est que diaspora capable d'aider et qui ça que pays est capable de faire pour aider diaspora pour l'aider. The Haitian diaspora represents certainly one of the greatest weapons that the country has because of your education, your training, your ideas, you are a great asset. I strongly believe that this great asset 
should be further leveraged to spur innovation and growth in the country. Those who followed my career as a son of a teacher and a sculptor, a tennis player, an entrepreneur, and over the last four years as a member of the Haitian government as former prime minister, will know that I always advocated for a greater inclusion of all of you into the state affairs of Haiti. And why not? You are bright, intelligent, you love the country, and you should be more involved, especially for the political destiny of Haiti. And you should have been allowed to vote in this year's election. You work hard, you earn a decent living, you punch in early and leave late. And you want to see the country be better. You want to see the glory days of Haiti be back. And for that, you need to be involved in the political process. You have to be able to elect your leaders, whether in Congress, the president, Kazek, Azek, what have you. You have earned the right to do so. And the Haitian diaspora is too often overlooked and underappreciated, and especially when it comes to the political process. You are greatly appreciated when it's time to send money home. So what are we going to do about it? So this can be a call to action to organize, unite, and have a unified front to take your political destiny in hand. You have the right to vote. You have the right to elect the leader. You just need to be more vocal about it and to be organized. Organization is key to success. And not only organization in Haiti. You represent 600,000 people in Florida, over a million people in New York. And how many members of Congress do, do we have representing us in Washington, D.C.? Say hi to former minister Daniel St. Lou. How many do we have representing us in Washington, D.C. to defend our interest? One. One representing 1.6 million. That has to change. But for it to change, again, it takes organization. Because as you know, in order for the Haitian authorities to start taking the diaspora seriously, you have to not only fight the fight in Haiti, but you need to be well represented in Congress. The Haitians that are in the diaspora have left for a number of reasons, economic, political, but not for lack of love of the homeland. I know that each and every one of you love Haiti with every single bone of your body. You love Haiti deeply and you desperately want the country to get better. You want the country to rise and make you proud again. But in order to do that, you have a major role to play. You have a major role to play for Haiti to get better. Because it's time that people stop taking the diaspora as a very large cash machine to give handouts, but also to see that the diaspora is investing in Haiti's future. And how can the diaspora invest in Haiti's future? We don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's been done. First is to gain back trust in government, is to have governments that have the country's interests at heart, that make decisions based on Haiti first. And with that, 
countries such as Israel, for example, in India, have used and leveraged the diaspora in order to invest in the country. A country like Israel has issued what's called the Israeli diaspora bonds and the Indian diaspora bonds. Between the two of them, they've collected over $35 billion to invest in infrastructure, to invest into the economy, and also make a return for those who, who put money in the bonds. So why is it that with such a large diaspora, such a diaspora that's so connected to Haiti through Island TV, through Scoop FM, that's on the internet, you are very connected with the everyday happenings of Haiti. Why is it that we cannot change the paradigm and stop seeing the diaspora for handouts and include the diaspora in political decisions and also why not create the Haiti diaspora bond with the help of Canada, of the US, with the help of all of these development agencies, with the help also in enlisting the top money management company in the world to create trust, with the help of the Haitian government, diaspora organizations, elected leaders, everybody comes as one to do good for the country. But do good not only by listening to the radios and feeling bad or feeling good about what's happening in Haiti, but taking a central leadership role in the future of the country by impacting development projects. The impact of development projects can, can make a huge difference into how the country is going and how the country is progressing. The remittance, of course, is, is a huge asset for Haiti. It represents 20% of the GDP of the country. And the World Bank estimates that remittance from 232 million members of diaspora will yield $516 billion of remittance in 2016. And as a matter of fact, we have a globalized world where societies and economies are increasingly interconnected. Developing countries in need of financing need to look from within to the expatriate communities to develop the countries and get support. The Haitian government should send a clear signal to the Haitian diaspora that its inputs, its initiatives, and actions are more than welcome. You can make a very big difference. And the importance of Haiti taking its destiny into its own hands is paramount. To achieve state building and sustainable development through socioeconomic empowerment. And socioeconomic empowerment means the increasing capacity to be self-reliant, having more financial sovereignty. And for a government, it implies slowly reducing dependency to foreign assistance and aid. And developing our own organizational, technical, and financial capacity to create partnerships, genuine partnerships with countries that want to help Haiti. And we need help from everybody. But first, we need to look from within. We need everybody to support Haiti. But everybody that wants to support Haiti, if you saw after the earthquake, we had an incredible amount of solidarity. But this is after a major catastrophe. It's time to take the destiny into our own hands. It's time to take the country's future and invest and believe in it. Our country has a lot of untapped potential. 
and that potential that should be nurtured, that should be privileged. We have a multi-sector economy. We enjoy proximity to very large international markets. We offer great investment opportunities. And we have a diaspora that's well positioned to help this happen. We need to look more into innovative financing for development as a way to help the country grow. Not to substitute international aid, but to complement it. As a way for the country to look at its own resources, at its own sectors, and to see how can we better optimize one sector or another sector to help the economy grow. We need to have jobs in the Haitian economy. What country can grow with over 50% unemployment and over 70% of an informal economy? But it will take time. And that takes us to the political stability. Political stability is paramount to progress. You need to give time to time for projects to mature and happen and for, and for people to trust the leadership of the country. Invest in technology. Look at the Rwanda model. Rwanda is a country very similar characteristics to Haiti. But I went to Rwanda the other day. I was impressed with what I saw. Rwanda invested. They have a very large donor community. The money is invested. They have a very large diaspora community as well. And the diaspora, they have their own neighborhood. The, the government left land. And you know, members of the diaspora have villas, have very beautiful homes, and they're investing in the country. A lot of sectors are open to diaspora investments. And the country itself has leveraged also the international donor aid to the sustainable development of the country and also promoting local production as such. So my message to you today is we have a country to develop. We have every single Haitian here and every single non-Haitian that are like Haitians, I'm not gonna say <laughs> names, but that care deeply about the future and the present of the country, want and desperately desire this country to get better. So it is up to us to show the world that we can do better. It is up to those present in this room, Marise, Kiela, it is up to you and to each and every one of us here to take the country's destiny in, in hand and show the donor community that we can do better. We are serious about our country. And I'm talking as a former prime minister, and because everybody tells me if I'm gonna, you know, what do I think about you know, running for president? I'm not, I'm not in the election, but I love the country. I'm not in the second round, but I wanna see the country get better because I was never in it for politics. I was in it for the love of my country and to make, for the small time that I was there, all of you proud. So I know I had 20 minutes. I think I exceeded the 20 minutes. I want to, again, thank the, prime, the former Prime Minister Jean-Max Belrive for all the efforts that you've made when you were Prime Minister. I know you were in a very difficult time after the earthquake. Gary Kony, the, the current prime minister, you know, all of you, let's put together and then change this country. Thank you. <laughs>